Hi there and welcome. In a previous video I was looking at what was allegedly the world's first handheld digital multimeter. And uh, I had a viewer that said, oh this is not the first one, but Sinclair made one earlier. At that time I didn't have a Sinclair multimeter, but I got one here in the meantime. Uh, the meter itself comes in this uh, leather casing and uh, is, is, I think it's real leather. Um, the meter is here, as you can see it looks like a pocket calculator. Um, it comes with a manual and uh, it's complete with circuit diagram. And also you can see here on the little flap, the last flap here, you can see all the, the ranges and the specifications. Um, apart from that, there are of course whoops, the probes and uh, and uh, finally there's this one here which is a shunt if you want to measure current. So it doesn't really have a current input as such, um, but you can plug this one in and now you have a current range. The meter itself as I said comes in a calculator casing. It looks it looks exactly like a calculator and inside you can see there's actually a seven digit display but only five of them are being used. On the front where the calculator keypad was supposed to be uh, it's been covered up by a metal plate and on top of that they have silk screened the different ranges. Then there's a slide switch, oops, then there's a slide switch for setting uh, the different measurement uh, ranges and up here a little switch that selects between ohm and uh, volts and milliamps. Uh, at the back there's a battery compartment and uh, here we have an on off switch and the power input. Uh, this one of course is uh, using battery but uh, with the power adapter here um, it can also run on mains. The adapter is just a standard adapter there's nothing special about this. Um, this one is the European plug uh, because this uh, Sinclair multimeter came from uh, a guy in Germany. Um, as you can see the lid has been uh, removed and uh, put back to together with some scotch tape. Um, so yeah, it's nothing special about this adapter except that you can see the jack being used here, which is uh, not really ideal for DC input because it short circuits when you plug it in. This is a feature, uh, so to speak, that was also used on the Sinclair ZX80, but was fixed in the ZX81. Uh, but anyway, so as you can see, there are only three digits and the decimal point out here is fixed. So uh, it's a little bit uh, unusual. Also there's no indicator saying kilo or mega ohm or what have you. You just have these three digits and the decimal point. But uh, let's try and switch it to kilo ohm and uh, you can see the front digit here is flashing meaning overload. So let me try and take a 6.8 kilo ohm resistor and see what we get. And uh, yeah of course I have to plug it into the ohm range and it says uh, it says 0 0.67 and the range is 10 kilo ohm so you have to multiply the 0 0.67 by uh, 10 kilo ohm and that gets gets you to uh, 6.7 kilo ohm so it's a little bit a uh, 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 little bit tricky to use uh, because it's not auto ranging but uh, I think it measures all right. If we just try and compare it to my fluke here, um, let's see if we can get them side by side. Um, let's try the seven uh, six point eight kilo ohm resistor uh, on the fluke, and it says six point eight five. So the Sinclair is a little bit out, but. Uh, not too bad. Now if we try volts, I have a power supply here generating some voltage, just a second. And this is 2.59 volts on the fluke. So if we connect the Sinclair instead, let's just switch it to volts and uh, DC input and uh, volts times 10. That should be it. Um, let's try and connect that. 
and it says 2.55 so um, yeah not too bad I think uh, all right not the best precision but uh, not too bad okay so I got it open and it wasn't too bad um, it's basically just a snap fit and uh, they used a little plastic rivet like this one uh, to hold it together and uh, once I figured out there was one of those in the box uh, it actually went uh, quite easily down here the four connectors they're soldered directly to the PCB and uh, they had to be desoldered as well um, but after that the PCD, PCB can just be lifted uh, out uh, and again they've used these plastic rivets um, and uh, that's a nice and cheap way to do it if we look at the quality of the PCB it's actually quite good and uh, you can see it has been machine soldered with the exception of the two ICs so um, yeah not bad uh, and I'm actually quite surprised uh, of the quality of uh, Sinclair products I actually think that uh, something like the ZX80 and the ZX81 the, the quality went down compared to what he did uh, before the Sinclair uh, computers but uh, let's try and flip the PCB around and uh, as you know the inputs are down here and uh, it's basically connected through uh, there's a 10 ohm resistor precision resistor and there's some kind of a hybrid module here and uh, that would be a persistor resistor network as well then we have the range switch which is a standard one and uh, just slide it left and right as we saw earlier then we have a 4007 uh, this is a CMOS device and uh, these are some AND gate on AND gates or something, some logic and uh, I remember from the circuit diagram that this is uh, generating a clock uh, for the main chip up here apart from that we have a couple of op amps here um, six op amps all together and uh, a lot of trimmers so um, yeah it's basically an analog input and the main chip which is this one here this is a GI uh, general instruments chip and it's an AY5 3507 and uh, that is a complete uh, multimeter chip uh, without the range switching and uh, as you can see we have to do that manually there's no auto ranging on this uh, board here uh, but the chip here has AD converter and it can uh, drive a four digit um, LED display uh, the LED display is a HP uh, display as far as I know um, this one here you can see there's space for there are nine bubbles here and these are basically magnifying glasses and inside there are four dies, four uh, seven segment LED displays inside uh, three of them as we saw are just full digits and the other one is just plus minus digit um, yeah so uh, that's basically it um, mechanically as I said is a pocket calculator enclosure and uh, you can see here the holes in the plastic where the buttons were supposed to be so yeah, basically uh, they just took a standard calculator casing and uh, where the buttons used to be they covered it up with a plate and a CNC slot for the, for the range switch. And uh, yeah, that's it really. A nice little board, uh, cheap multimeter without the um, automatic range switching. And uh, yeah, one thing we just had to, one thing I just forgot, we better look at the date code on these chips. Um, to be sure that this one is really earlier than the other one and uh, if we look at the main chip this is uh, week 42 1977 and uh, this chip here 1973 and uh, this one is saying uh, 76 uh, should be 1977 that is the latest chip on this one here the main chip is from 1977 so yeah the Sinclair multimeter is about one year earlier than the Japanese multimeter and uh, you can see during that year we had auto ranging because uh, the Japanese one uh, had auto ranging and uh, it would have the decimal point moving uh, on the display this one here is fixed but yeah I guess that's it um, thanks for watching and see you again real soon